In this video, we're talking about how to set up for trigonometric substitution problems. And this isn't necessarily something that you're going to be taught in class if you're taking a calculus class. But I always like to go over it. And whenever I do a trigonometric substitution problem, I always go through this same setup process. The reason being because trigonometric substitution problems are often long and tedious and complicated. And if you don't have this information at your fingertips, you're going to find yourself going through the problem and having to stop and come back to this and calculate one of these values. If you always go through this same setup process ahead of time, you're going to have all of the information you need for the problem and you're going to be able to go straight through it. It's just going to make things a lot easier and faster and so for that reason it's a good idea to get in the habit of going through this same setup process. So I'm going to walk you through how I do these and hopefully it'll help. So the first thing you want to do when you have a trigonometric substitution problem, you're going to have an integral like one of these three here, the three integrals that I've written out. The first thing you want to do is identify which kind of value you have in terms of a squared minus u squared, a squared plus u squared, or u squared minus a squared. And here's what we mean by that. For these values, a here is a constant. u represents the variable x. So for example, in this first integral here, I have underneath the square root sign 1 minus x squared. So what I need to realize is that I have basically a constant, 1, minus a variable value. So I have a constant term minus a variable term. Just like here with a squared minus u squared, I have a constant term minus a variable term because we always treat a as the constant and u as the variable. So in this case, I would want to identify that the value I have in my integral is in the form a squared minus u squared. And if that's the case, then I know I'm going to be using the substitution u is equal to a sine theta, and I'll go through a certain setup process for that. That would be different than the second example where I have in my integral a squared plus u squared. Again, a is the constant, u is the variable. If I look here in the denominator, I have a variable term plus a constant term. So I have the sum of the variable term and the constant term, which means I have the sum here of a squared and u squared. And again, because in this case we're dealing with a sum, it doesn't matter if you have a squared plus u squared or the opposite order, u squared plus a squared, these two are the same thing. So I could have had 9 plus 4x squared instead of 4x squared plus 9, and it would be the same substitution. In that case, you're going to be using the substitution u is equal to a tangent of theta, and we'll go through a slightly different but very similar setup process. Or you could have a value like this, u squared minus a squared. In other words, the variable term minus the constant term. So here we had the constant minus the variable, here we have the sum of the two, and here we have the variable minus the constant. I can see in my integral here underneath the square root sign in the numerator of this fraction that I have a variable term x squared minus a constant term 25. So I need to think variable minus constant, that's u squared minus a squared, variable minus constant, which means I'm going to be using the substitution u is equal to a secant theta. So that's the first thing you're doing is identifying do I have a squared minus u squared, a squared plus u squared, or it's opposite here, or u squared minus a squared. Once you identify which of those you have in your integral function, you'll know which substitution to use. And then the information that you find based on that value you have in your integral is always going to be the same. This is the information here I'm going to find. I'm also going to complete a reference triangle for each of these substitutions. Notice that the only thing that's different across the setup process for each of these is that in this first example, we're going to be solving for the trigonometric function sine of theta. The reason is because we have sine of theta in the substitution we're making, which is different than here where we solve for tangent of theta because we have tangent of theta in our substitution, which is different from this last example where we're going to solve for secant of theta because we have secant of theta in our substitution. But notice everything else is always the same. We're always going to be solving for a squared and u squared, and then from those, finding a and u. Then we're going to solve for x, we're going to find dx, we're going to solve for the trigonometric function that's associated with the substitution we're making, and then we're going to use that to solve for theta. And once we've got all of this done, we're going to plug some pieces of information into our reference triangle, and we'll be done with our setup process. So let's go through each of these examples and show you what the setup process looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is identify a squared and u squared. So remember here with this integral, we already identified that we had constant minus variable. So we're going to match up a squared, the constant, with the constant term we have here. So a squared is going to be equal to 1 in this case. Then we have minus the variable term u squared. Here we have minus our variable term x squared. So u squared is going to be 
x squared. And then once we have these two, we want to solve for not a squared and u squared, but a and u. So really, that's just taking the square root of both sides, because if we take the square root of a squared, we get a. So we want to take the square root of 1, and we want to say then that a is equal to 1. Here we have u squared equals x squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we can solve for u and say that u is equal to x. Now when we solve for x right here, what we're talking about is using this substitution identity here, u is equal to a sine theta. Remember we just found that u is equal to x. So we're going to plug x in for u here and say x is equal to a sine theta. Well we know that a is 1, so we're going to get x is equal to 1 sine theta, which is the same thing as x is equal to sine of theta. Now we can solve this equation for sine of theta. Remember we had a coefficient of 1 in front of this sine theta value here. Obviously we know that sine theta is just equal to x, but we can call this x over 1, and we're going to come back to in a second why we would want to do that. So we'll leave that for now. We want to find dx, which is the derivative of x here. Well the derivative of sine of theta is just cosine of theta, so we get cosine of theta d theta. And then we also want to find theta, and we'll use this sine of theta equals x to find theta. We just want to take the inverse sine function of both sides of this equation here, or arc sine of both sides, so that we get arc sine and sine to cancel with one another, leaving us with just theta over here on the left. And then we're going to end up with arc sine of x over here on the right. So theta is going to be arc sine of x. So now we have everything we need except our reference triangle, and we're going to start building our reference triangle from this sine of theta equation here. Remember that sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Remember Sokotoa from trigonometry, where it tells us that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse? Well, the reason we wrote x over 1 is because now we can say this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse side. So here if we have our right triangle, and this is the angle theta, we can say that the opposite side from that angle is going to be x, and that the hypotenuse is going to be 1. To find the third side, we'll just use the Pythagorean theorem. Remember the Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. So to find the third side, we can just plug x in for a, pretend that it's one of the legs, so we'll get x squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We know c is 1 because that's a hypotenuse, so 1 squared or just 1. Then we want to solve this for b, the third side, or the other leg of the right triangle. So we'll subtract x squared from both sides and get b squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. Then we'll take the square root of both sides and get b is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. And now we can say that this third side is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared and we have our reference triangle. Let's do another example. Here we've identified that we have a variable term plus the constant term, which means we're going to have this u squared plus a squared format inside of our integral. So if we compare u squared plus a squared to 4x squared plus 9, we can say that a squared is 9 and that u squared is 4x squared. So then taking the square root of both sides, we can say that a is equal to 3 and that u is equal to 2x. Now we know that u is equal to 2x, so we want to plug 2x in for u right here, and we're going to get 2x is equal to a tangent theta, or in our case, 3 tangent theta. Then we want to solve this for tangent theta, which we'll do by dividing both sides by 3, so we get tangent theta is equal to 2x over 3. We want to find dx by taking the derivative of this equation here. First of all, we'll divide both sides by 2, and we'll get x is equal to 3 halves tangent theta. And then dx is going to be 3 halves secant squared theta d theta, since secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So that's going to be our value for dx, and then this value of theta we get from this tangent theta equation. We take arctan of both sides, and so we get arctan of 2x over 3. Now we're going to start with this tangent theta equation to build our reference triangle. Remember that Sokotoa tells us that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we can say that this is opposite and this is adjacent. So if this is the angle theta, then the opposite side is going to be 2x. The adjacent side is going to be 3. 
So then by the Pythagorean theorem, remember a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, c is the hypotenuse, that's the unknown value in this case. So we're going to go ahead and say 2x quantity squared, or 4x squared, plus b squared, or in our case 3 squared, so plus 9, is equal to c squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we're going to get c is equal to the square root of 4x squared plus 9. So we can plug this in for the hypotenuse and say that the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 4x squared plus 9, like this. Now we'll do one more example. Again, we're going to follow the same process every time. In this integral, we've identified that we have a variable term minus a constant term, just like u squared minus a squared, the variable term minus the constant term. So we compare u squared minus a squared to x squared minus 25, and we say that u squared is equal to x squared, and we say that a squared is equal to 25. Then we're going to take the square root of both sides of both equations and say that a is equal to 5 and that u is equal to x. Then we want to take these two values and plug them into this u equals a secant theta, and we would get x is equal to 5 secant theta, so we have x equals 5 secant theta. Then we want to solve for secant of theta by dividing both sides by 5, and we get secant of theta is equal to x over 5. We also want to take the derivative of x equals 5 secant theta to get dx. Well, the derivative of secant theta is just secant theta tangent theta, so we're going to get 5 secant theta times tangent theta times d theta for the derivative dx. And then to solve for theta, we'll use this secant theta equals x over 5. We'll take arc secant of both sides to get theta by itself on the left, and we'll end up with arc secant of x over 5 on the right. And now to build our reference triangle, again, we always start with this trigonometric identity, secant of theta. So Katoa tells us that cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, secant is equal to 1 over cosine, which means that I just have to flip adjacent and hypotenuse. So where cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is going to be hypotenuse, and this is going to be adjacent. And here, then, we can say, the hypotenuse is x, so we'll label the hypotenuse as x, and the adjacent side is 5, so we'll label the adjacent side as 5. And then to find the third side, again, we use the Pythagorean theorem, and so we'll say 5 squared plus b squared is equal to x squared. We want to solve now for b, so we'll get b squared is equal to x squared minus 25. We'll take the square root of both sides, and we'll get b is equal to the square root of x squared minus 25, and then we can plug that into our reference triangle and say the square root of x squared minus 25 is this opposite leg over here. And that's it. That's how you set up a trigonometric substitution problem. And I promise you, if you get comfortable with this set of steps and you start following it every time you do a practice problem, this will get a lot more comfortable and your trigonometric substitution problems will be a whole lot easier.